Hello, everybody. Happy to have you here today for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Before we get started, we need to introduce you to the 2020 winner of this award, who never received the benefit of an awards ceremony. Dr. John Zeden was a career employee of Westinghouse, a leading semiconductor manufacturer in the 1960s and early 1970s. Zeden first proposed the use of a charge trap as a memory storage element. Charge traps have replaced the floating gate in nearly all 3D NAND flash today, and it's shipped more bits in its short history than all floating gate cells combined over the history of memory technology. Flash Memory Summit offers its hearty congratulations to John Zeden for his profound impact on the industry. A brief round of applause for John Zeden. Thank you. Now let's move on to this year's recipients. And what is it that we are actually honoring? Now, the Lifetime Achievement Award recognizes individuals who have shown outstanding leadership in promoting the development and use of flash memory and associated or related technologies, including creation and or promotion of an important flash technology or a technology to supersede flash, leadership of a major flash company or business effort, or bringing flash technology to new and important application. Past honorees include the Intel team that shipped the first flash memory, which was Dick Pashley, Stefan Lai, Bruce McCormick, and Niles Kynet. Sandus co-founder and industry pioneer, Eli Harari. Fujio Masuoka, the inventor of flash memory. Simon Z, the, the co-inventor of the floating gate. Bob Norman, one of the three architects of Sandisk's system flash. Keenan Kim, who drove rapid developments in NAND flash, particularly at Samsung. George Perlegos, founder of Atmel and Seek. Dove Moran and Ari Murgi, founders of M Systems and the developers of numerous technologies, including USB storage. Sanjay Merocha, Sandus co-founder and flash memory trailblazer. And in 2020, John Zeden, the co-inventor of charge trap memory. This year, three members of our community receive an honor for a technology that has revolutionized the flash memory business. These are Yoshishigi Kitamura, Eli Harari, and Greg Atwood. The memory business has always been very cost-driven. If you can reduce the cost, the more applications will use it, and applications that already use memory will use more of it. Now, if you add bits, you can reduce costs. But how do you do that? Now, floating gates can store linear voltage levels, leading to different ways to store multiple bits of on a transistor. A normal cell, now called SLC, stores two voltages for a 1 and a 0. That same cell can also be programmed to one of four voltages to store two bits and become MLC, or three bits at eight voltage levels to become TLC, or even 16 volt levels to become store four bits for MLC, excuse me, for um, QLC. The people who spearheaded this concept are this year's honorees. First to actually consider this idea was Yoshishigi Kitamura. And now I'd like to play a video of him accepting the award. Hello, my name is Kitamura. First of all, I'd like to thank you all who are working in flash memory technology and business. Your hard work made it possible for me to receive this award. When I got the idea of multi-bit cell in 1980s, the EPROM technology at NEC was not very matured. I could not foresee such wide use of multi-bit cell technology. Now, thanks to the effort of many people, the multi-bit cell technology has evolved to triple to quadruple bit cell and contributed to the cost reduction of flash memory products. I'm happy to see Multi-bit cell technology is applied 
to many flash memory products we use in our daily life. Thank you. In 1985, Kitamura was an engineer at NEC, creating the first computer models for MASC-ROM back before CAD became available. At that time, NEC was the world's leading manufacturer of DRAM and EEPROM. In fact, it was the world's leading semiconductor manufacturer. He was drafted for an EEPROM project and noticed a big difference between the hard ones and zeros of MASC-ROM and the linear voltages of EEPROM. He wrote a patent application for a way that this could be used to store multiple bits on an EEPROM cell. But NEC later decided not to pursue this patent. I'd like to now call Ellie Harari to the stage, please. So this year, our next honoree becomes the only two-time recipient of a Flash Memory Summit Lifetime Achievement Award. SanDisk founder Eli Harari brought out several chips that used MLC to drive the cost of flash memory, to drive down the cost of flash memory, first with NorFlash and then with NAND. In fact, SanDisk was the first company to ship 4-bit MLC, which today is called QLC. And back in 2008, QLC to store 16 voltages on a single cell, cutting costs to nearly one quarter of the expected level. With this approach, SanDisk was able to drive down costs to create numerous new affordable consumer flash products to grow to annual revenues in excess of $6 billion. So now we'd like to present the actual plaque to Dr. Harari. Post for a picture here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. yeah. Why don't you hold it right like that? Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Thank you very much um, to the selection committee. Um, uh, just a few words. Uh, we started in 1988 uh, when we founded SanDisk. Um, and at that time, Flash was very much in its infancy. Uh, and the total world uh, output was about a billion dollars. And it was 100% code store. Our vision was for data store, to take that technology and make it what it is today. So now we're 34 years later, and the flash memory industry is close to $80, $80 billion uh, a year, and 95% of that is data flash. Uh, SanDisk brought to the world really two major innovations, system flash and MLC. System flash was crucial for data integrity. Without it, you could not ship anything. For, for data storage, MLC, of course, was key for flash cost competitiveness. There was also a third element in this success, the secret source of SanDisk. And that was the team of amazing people. I'm sorry. They, sorry. They believed in the vision and were fearless despite so many odds, technical and otherwise, and overcame obstacles that made Flash a game changer uh, that it has become. Of course, the same can be said about our competitors. They were 
thousands of engineers, great people that really together worked to make this technology. So <clears throat> it's a great honor for me uh, to accept, uh, accept this award on behalf of Sanders, the Sanders team. Uh, and we used to always say at SanDisk, Go SanDisk! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Our next awardee is Greg Atwood. I'd like to call him to the stage, please. Yeah, you can stay. You can stay. Okay. So Greg, Greg Atwood um, put Intel into the MLC flash business. He convinced, convinced Flash Group's general manager, Dr. Richard Pashley, one of the 19, excuse me, 2011 award winners, to sponsor an effort to bring MLC to Intel's Flash product line. The group found that they could build MLC Flash that, would nearly, that met nearly all the specifications of Intel's SLC Flash. And in fact, the results were so compelling that management decided to convert their entire product line to MLC. The results were that the company's flash business shifted to MLC in the early 2000s. Yes. <laughs> We're going to take a picture here. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, and thanks to the selection committee. I'm really honored to receive this award, and I think I'm equally honored to be receiving the same award as Sally Herrera. <laughs> certainly he's, uh, well, at least left, but certainly he's a legend in, in our industry. When we started the, uh, okay, when we started the MLC program, or the 2-bit per cell program at Intel, there was a lot of people who didn't think it was feasible. In fact, even after we introduced the first product, there were still some people that didn't think it really worked. Um, I know that sounds kind of strange now. We do 3-bit and we do 4-bit, and, and MLC, uh, QLC is, is uh, starting to really emerge in the marketplace. But uh, at that time, it was something uh, very, very new, uh, especially in a, a really digital type of a world. Initially, we thought it would just work in a system that it would require a controller and we were looking at doing memory cards but then through I think a lot of very creative concepts we managed to make a single standalone component out of it and we started to replace all of our single bit per cell flash components with two bit per cell uh, components. It was a, certainly a very exciting uh, time but I think really what enabled it to work was uh, very similar to what I think enabled uh, Ellie to be successful at SanDisk was assembling a highly vertically integrated team where we had device engineers, circuit designers, process engineers, and system engineers. I think the MLC capability existed at the functional boundaries between all of these different disciplines. And putting them all in one room and having them work together to solve the problem in very creative ways, uh, I believe was really our, our success. And I think that's a really good message for us today, uh, however many years later, I don't like to think how many years later it really has been. Uh, as uh, memory becomes really dominant in the performance and the power of modern systems, I think really a lot of our opportunity exists at those boundaries between yeah. the system guys and the yeah. component guys and the process and device guys. And of course, I, I, I can't take the award without recognizing the team. It was a highly creative group of individuals pioneering really new methodologies and new techniques. We were run as a little startup inside of uh, Micron, and we were forced to grow our own team. And uh, they are all amazing engineers and they've all become amazing leaders 
to as their uh, careers have progressed. So thank you. All right. All right. There you go. This one.